But at the same time, you know, we've got a lot of big things still to come. We've got NRG versus Obey in game number four to seal the day. Hindu and F dot, go ahead and take it away. Thank you very much, Taco. I really appreciate it. She said she's it. got friends. That was uh, the funniest yeah, thing that, about that. That's why I'm I, thought, I thought what Frosty said was good, but then when I thought when, when Taco said she's got friends, that's why I was like, okay, now you're joking. Oh, I mean, that, 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 that's why I'm laughing over here. I guess as much. To be completely honest with you. Uh, we've got the last game of the night, the rematch from Worlds. Energy versus Obey. Let's just get right into the picks and bands real yeah. quick here. Uh, you can see I fixed my tie by getting rid of it. Good job. And that's what Obey what Alliance. Your tie? That's what, what? What was wrong with you? Oh, it was just all messed up. Oh. And that's exactly what Obey did to fix Frezzy. They got rid of it. And they're going to replace him with a Mealzy. You wanted to laugh at that one. I, know I didn't. Did. I was kind of like, that's a mean one. That was meaner <laughs> than me. I'm mean, but y'all, that was mean. How is, how is this, the Sylvanas again? Mean. Awful. Awful so Obey Alliance replaced Frezzy with a new with a, a new support player, Emilzi, and Variety leaves the team on his own accord, so they have to find a replacement as well. This time it's going to be Maniac, who is probably the biggest focus yep. here. He Definitely. hasn't played in about a year. They showed up during the spring split a little bit. Yeah, and that's the key here is what does Maniac do in this game? Is he going to get dominated by Dimmy? Is he going to find his stride straight away? What is the mentality of Maniac as well? Because at the end of his career towards when he took a break, he did start to fall off a little bit. He didn't look as invested as he once was. Has he got the drive back again is the question, or has he still got to find that if he's going to compete at the highest level? For me, that last split that he played with Fnatic was more a team dynamic than him himself. So at the end of the day, being out of practice as far as professional play is concerned is going to impact how strong you are in, in, in no matter what mm. we've seen a number of players come back to the game some of which that has that have seen long-term success but the immediate transition is always troublesome now these two teams though even though obey do have roster changes overall with a millsy joining them the dynamic will change a little bit here and that's i guess the discussion point of what obey will do differently now they've not got frezzy to force them to fight by getting himself in awkward positions right. on purpose they're gonna have to have a millsy initiate correctly and have captain twig be ready to follow up well when it comes down to it a millsy in that are two, in my opinion, of the most cerebral players in the league. So they're going to be able to think about how they are going to that. initiate and start the fights intentionally rather than accidentally. Omega Alliance will be going up against the unchanged roster, the defending world champions of energy. Kepri is going to be selected for Iraf or Mercury, likely in the jungle. Yeah, Don't think. hold your breath for Dimmy. It's likely going to belong to adapting. And then Poseidon in the middle lane for Yaman so far. Cross the way, Zeus and Kabraken. Yeah, we'll see what they end up going with now, Obey. They probably want to look for a support potentially here, unless Kabraken's going to be that, or even the Amaterasu that's been locked in already for the solo lane. Amaterasu could be go to Maniac here for a very safe defensive sure. god in the lane. Just farm out your lane, get towards team fights, make something happen. But there is a chance there, if that is the case, for energy to exploit that on the duo, on, sorry, on the solo side of the map. Especially since the fact that Amaterasu, you said she's safe and she's, by, she's lonesome, but she's certainly not easy. Before no. that level nine clear comes through, you, you're very susceptible to getting dove on the tower. You're very susceptible to getting yourself in trouble. So you got to keep an eye on that if that winds up going to Maniac. Tier will be banned out by Obey Alliance, and Energy will answer by banning a jungler, Susano. So a lot of mobility taken off the table with both the Red Tasker and the Susano ban from Energy. Exactly, and that's what you want to do against Captain Twig is kind of limit his mobility a little yeah. bit more here. He has drafted the likes of Nemesis in the past, and we've seen some Nemesis today. We could see it again here because it does utilize very well with the Kabrakan and Amaterasu as the real front line and the burst potential from the Zeus as well. Not only that, Amateur, sorry, um, Nemesis is pretty good against Mercury in terms of slowing him down, so his power is not as strong as it normally is. Energy, I love this Geb ban coming out from Energy. It's twofold. One, and Geb is not the number one selected support right now, but Emilzy likes him specifically. And two, Mercury is going to build into crit most likely. He's a heavy crit, high burst assassin. Geb is actually immune, not immune, but his passive really stops a lot of that crit damage. So understanding that that's the direction that Mercury is probably going to build in for adapting, you're taking Geb off the table and anticipating the Artemis selection, which is also a character that is built on Critical Strike. So by banning out the Geb, not only do you take out the personal pick from Emilzy, but you set yourself up for the crit lineup. Yeah, other things we've seen Emilzy really play has been the Athena. Um, has picked up some Fafnir in the past, could see that one as well. But instead, he will be more the than likely playing the Kabrakan or the Amaterasu, so Cat will invest in the jungle here instead. Uh, push power, I'd, I'm, it's going to be interesting based off what Obey run in the duo 
Kobe Kabrak and Kobe Amaterasu. The Cirquette is an interesting choice here, Hindu Man, for me. Uh, looking at the Poseidon with the uh, with the cripple available, mm -hmm. um, Sun Wukong who has the the free life if you don't get the ticks out in soon in time. Cirquette's an interesting pick. We'll see how Captain Twig makes it work. Obey Alliance versus Energy, your world's rematch here, right now. Okay, so it will be Amaterasu for a Milzy here. Ew. Has sustain, has mobility to help out directly on the all as well at the start of the game. Uh, wave cleared. Wave clear overall here is actually pretty even between the two. It's ever so slightly going to favor energy if they can group the minions a little bit better and allow the suppress the insulin to come into play from Amelito. Group up those minions. Uh, gone for the death toll, not the blue stone pendant though, which is normal on an amateur or so anyway, but if the blue stone would have hit, it would have helped clear a little bit more. Sure. But the dance will begin in the duo, and it's good to see what the world champions choose to do and what Obey choose to do in response. Energy sniffing out the opponent's jungle and uh, Obey doing the same catches wind of energy, however. The fight, I feel, does definitely go the way of Obey here in this one, unless Crit comes into play. Amelito trying to get those basics off on the Crit. Amelito's going to get a couple of Two hits mets. down. Rapper uses the meditation, both of them down for the count. One more basic will do it. Raxia starts the game with a bang, and down goes Amelito as well. The Dubliou to start the game for Ataraxia. Great start from Obey early on, and now look at the mid lane as well at the same time. They're pressuring the mid wave, which is allowing them to get the speed buff as well. Meanwhile, Maniac's like, don't worry, boys. I can handle these two. I've seen these before in the past and dealt with it. <laughs> this is a statement from, from Obey. A lot of people, myself included, have talked about how, you know, this is an easy energy 2-0. Obey are going to take a step back with some of the roster changes, this, that, and a third. But realistically speaking, Obey coming out of the gates like that, that's exactly what you have to do in this situation. The meditation start from both of them, I I immediately called it in that little skirmish because yeah. I expected the meditate would come down to not necessarily who pops it first, but at the correct time. Rafa absorbed a lot of damage in that two, in that 1v1 scuffle there. And what at uh, the level one scuffle, I should say. Oh. But his meditate wasn't great, but maybe he can turn this around on Ataraxia now. Sanctuary gonna be used, and Rafa is going to smoke him out anyway. Raxia falls down after his double kill. So Obey get a little bit over aggressive there in the dual lane after a successful start. Bit of a nosebleed situation, I guess, overall there. Yeah. Fought but off a little bit more than they can choose. Still gonna respect the dual lane from energy. They will come back into it. Now they did strip away one buff in the jungle of that red as they look for a Milzy here, but now energy have the chance to respond by invading themselves. Rare misstep there from Emilito. That, that, that trap fill, fields right into the uh, the abduct right there. Uh -oh. And Emilito has been playing the hell out of this Artemis in the solo queue so far. In a lot of trouble here, surrounded by Fall, gonna have to abduct away. I like the fact that Twig jumps over him there, just to make sure that if he does have the abduct up again, he can body block it and absorb it and keep him pinned in place. Nice repick for Obey again, and it also gets Captain Twig on the board as well. Yeah, Twiggy always has a mind for the for those abilities and getting in the way. We actually saw, I, th I believe it was Twig at Worlds that uses the that used the blink to get in front of a kept recharge like that to really stop a situation. So seeing that in the regular season, no surprise. Now Yamin has started off with Rag Ragnar's Mask this game as yeah. well, which is something we've not seen too much of so far this year. It is a stack of and that just starts off with a little bit of MP5 for the value of 500 gold. But if you can get the stacks up to a decent amount, you start to get cooldown reduction and movement speed as well. And penetration you get it fully stacked it's not an item i expect to see too often right now the mana regeneration does help mid laners which is what mid laners suffer with which i can understand but it's also to dictate the energy you're expecting to come into this one and have a bloodbath well he, here's the deal i, I think you you, you kind of over the stacks come from kills and assists it's not some item that you stack exactly. in a lane captain twig sniffing out dimmy not level five yet so that ultimate still not available. Demi doesn't know. Finally catches sight of the circuit, I think. And Captain Twig is going to go shade away as he sees the jungle respawn. So away from that gank. Really, Rangar's mask over here. You, this this item is sort of like we, we were talking about Hide of the Urchin yep. earlier, yes, right? We were. This, this item is very similar in the sense that you have to be confident that you're going to get the kills. And since it's an item purchased early, this is this... This is a swagger out of me. It's this, when you come in and you buy Rangdar's Mask Minute 1, to me that's saying, all right, I'm going to win the lane, I'm going to kill you, and I'm going to be dope. That's all it says. Speed buff invade coming out from Obey here, potentially, but adapts in here. Still level 4, remember. They could look to pressure him based off this, but rotation from energy on the way as well. Yeah, Mielzy with the ultimate available, just going to walk near the Mercury as a threat. Ultimate from, the, from Yamin comes out as an attempt to secure the buff. Can't see if it's on the ground just yet to be. Oh, it does go to obey. Yeah, it definitely goes to obey there. Captain Twig does get away as well, but Kraken was invested for that. 
And one more point about the Ragnar's Mask as well. Even if you don't get the stacks, even if you don't get it useful, it's still giving you mana regen, and it sells for 333 uh, gold. Not good enough for me. Oh, if fine. you're not getting the stacks, it's not worth it. In, in my eyes, it's a risk-reward item that, pay, if it doesn't pay off, you get most of the gold back. Sure, away. but what you, what you miss, you're missing the minutes that you could have had a better mm. item. And that is that is not something to scoff at. Yes, you're totally right. You buy for 500 gold. When you sell it, you get 333 back. You get two thirds of the gold back. I, I completely understand that it's only a net loss of 100 and something gold. But how much gold could you have earned if you bought a real item? Dimmy's wondering about some real items. He's gonna fall down to the gang from Captain Twig. Twiggy's been waiting there on the right side of the map for a long time. He's gonna put number four on the board for his team. Number two for him personally, and that'll help him finish up his boots. I love the play from Obey early on, though. They're not just going to sit back and let energy dictate whatsoever. They're the ones on the forefront here a little bit more. As they do go to energy, those oracles, they're not actually going to get either of those, unfortunately. But look at what happened here. Dueling got ahead. Twig makes a rotation, picks up a kill for himself. And immediately, what does he do? Yeah. Turn his attention to Dimmy to help out Maniac as well. Spread the wealth of the leads oh, yeah. around the team. Help out all the lanes you can. That's always been Obey's claim to fame, is that they are definitely a team-minded team. -minded team. That might sound like a duh situation, but you'd be surprised how many teams rely on the back of one or two players. And now with that as well, just look at the jungler and the solo lane from each team. You can see the level difference between them right now early on. But look at this, Obey already starting the goal for I was just well. going to mention that they're already 2k in the lead. Raffer sniffs it out, but it's just too late. Gold Fury goes the way of Obey. That'll launch them even further. 3,000 plus in the lead early on. Not even six minutes on the clock, Ram. And a lot of this really dictated by the dual lane start over Overall. Yeah, there was things happening on the right-hand side of the map, but seeing that the dual lane was struggling from energy right at the beginning of the game and a double yeah. kill to Ataraxia, they lose buffs, they lose a bit of pressure, and energy are already on the back foot from that moment. And here's the thing when you're playing Ool, uh, as all the same start, the Bluestone into the Transcendence boots come first. Uh, the the Uller start, it, Uller is a character that doesn't do anything if he's not fighting, right? You can look at some characters and say they're lane bullies, like uh, I'm using Cobb, right? I'll use him. And then you look at uh, you look at characters like Emilito, and he wants to fight, but he can also clean. Uller just wants to fight you. You start the game off with that double kill, you're putting him in a position where yeah. exactly where he wants to be. Well, the other thing for energy now, and they are the world champions, first of all. That's the first thing you got to say. The world champions, they've been in bad negative situations before, oh, yeah. still come out on top. And then when you look down the list of the gods they've got here, they have two very good physical hyper carries on this squad. Mercury and Artemis. That's if things don't continue to push in Obey's favor, energy will always have a way back in. At 100%, and, you know, when it comes down to the talent level of these guys, nobody's nobody's talking otherwise as Raffer gets pressured under his tower. But at the end of the day, you're right. The late game carries are on the side of energy, oh, yeah. but you can't be down 4,000 adapting, trying to turn things around, finds the ultimate down the left-hand side. Yamin very low, and he's Millsy will get caught out. Beautiful save coming out from Raffer. He might trade his life for it. Control out of the jungler. And there he goes, Zigzag claims Rapper. And still adapts and trying to get the speed buff before they notice it, but he's forced to reset it again, and now Obey looking at it once more to steal it away. Yeah. Give it over to Captain Twig one more time. And the funny thing is, you saw Millsy in that engagement there, he did a good job of sticking next to Rapper for when the respawn happened of Yamin. If he was any other supportive guardian, he would have been able to CC both of them. <laughs> but at the same time, it still worked out, so Obey didn't lose out there. They got what they came for, speed buff, and a couple of kills as a bonus. Absolutely. When you take a look at the lead, it's still very much so in Obey's favor early, early on. I can't stress how, how important it is that that is early. It's a, the relative lead is a pretty enormous. And, and what I was saying before we got into that team fight was, yeah, you know, you're right. With the Mercury and the Artemis, this is a team that can sort of tread water until the late game. And knowing how these guys perform, they, they absolutely can tread water. Ooh. Crafty play by Emily. Though. Those trades are going to be so much fun to watch this season around those oracles between yeah. the two hunters. Just who's going to hit the last hit at the right time? Who's going to get the lucky crit or just know their ability damage a little bit better? My problem, though, is waiting for those late game hyper carries, Graham, is you're, you're down three to 4,000 this early. Sure, it's about treading water and you're expecting to be behind, but how far? And this is an issue. Well, look at what Captain Twig is on right now in terms of kills. 3-0-0 yeah. zero, zero already. His build, he's gone for a bit of a defensive option with the Vanguard just to weather the storm a little bit of these engagements, it seems. Yeah, it's very strange. Elsewhere. Um, obviously, Bluestone's great on Sir Cat. I completely understand that one, but the Vanguard investment's interesting to me as to whether or not he should have invested elsewhere first. So, yeah, the, the Vanguard the Vanguard investment is very similar to, to this Rangdaz mask, where, where I don't hate it, 
but I think a better item could have come through. I think the mentality behind the, the tanky starter item coming out on, in the number four slot for the Shirket is to combat the bluestone tick damage out of the Sun Wukong, who I think she plans on investing a lot of time in. And now with how the game's gone so far, with Obey having the lead at the moment, it's going to be on energy to respond to what the aggression comes out from Obey. As we see in now, they need to play back, wait for the right opportunity to collapse like energy and very good at. What is that push for? Very curious about that push. Here comes the ultimate, and Adaraxia is going to die to the hand of Emilito. The Big gank good. coming out from adapting. Adapting the gank set that one up, but it was mainly Emilito that did most of the work in that yeah. engagement there. The ball was timed nicely after adapting gets aggro to an extent, forcing aggro from Ataraxia onto him. And then the trap to follow it up after the Aegis came out in the correct position, knowing that it was one of the only real options Ataraxia did, had to get away. Very curious, though. Um, with the, we saw a little bit of aggression coming out from Emilzi underneath the tower here in mid lane. I wonder what the uh, what the thought process was. Yamin going to get jumped on and trade his ultimate. Likely to stay alive for this one. Happy enough of him, Captain Twig, to let that happen, honestly. I mean, he got beads as well as yeah. the Kraken out of Yamin in the mid lane. Keeps Yamin in the back foot. But he shows Yamin's skill level there. That the moment that Sirkit comes in, he's like, hang on a second. Just back up for a moment. I'm going to get a little bit more room before you <laughs> jump me. And I'm still going to live. Yep. Right there, the mid laner lives to see another day. Side and building into uh, pretty standard stuff coming out, honestly. Yeah, this is just a solid game from Obey so far. Consistently invading the speed buff on cooldown the whole game. Since the start of the game, when Energy lost a double kill in duo lane, giving it over to Ataraxia, Obey on the right hand side have invaded the speed over and over again. And now looking at the Portal Demon as well for some bonus golden experience. Yeah, only 11 minutes in, this Portal Demon just spawns at level 10. Maniac blinks in, gets a stun, and forces the ultimate out of Dimmy right away. Maniac on the Kabrakin, very interesting to see. You know, I really anticipated Maniac to play, maybe not Shock, but I expected to see him on the Sun Wukong, a the warrior. Mana. A warrior is what we Not we even Warrior, something simple. Kabrakin is the opposite, my eyes, and you got to tip your hat to the man that comes in after a year playing one of the more complex characters. And he's doing very well for himself and his team so far. The Gold Fury now contested again around the Oracle Pit. That looks like that went one for one. Overall, there's a ward down, though, in favor of Energy just to make sure they've got control here at the time being. Energy just trying to hold on. Just trying to hold on at the start of the season. Yeah, exactly. Uh, 5K down now. I'll be stretching their lead ever much so. Just shy of 12 minutes, five to two, read the kills. Obey in the lead in all relevant categories, even experience about 5,400. Yeah, it's the give experience or take. for me. I thought the experience is huge here. It's 500 per person for the, how long the game's gone yeah. on. That, that doesn't seem a lot when it's just per person, but at 12 minutes, it's huge. In the grand scheme of things, it just means you've got a couple more levels in your abilities, which means they're doing base damage a little bit more, your cooldowns are a little bit lower, you've also just got raw extra health in your actual god as well. And of course, you know, all the other good things at scale uh, with your leveling, so certainly something to be aware of. Obey right now, certainly in the driver's seat. Yeah, I mean, you can see just the, the just the realization of what that experience is. Uh, the biggest difference, I think, is in the support role, which especially Amaterasu, when you're comparing a Sobek or a Geb, if you're comparing a Geb to a Kepri, it's pretty much like the levels don't really matter. But the Amaterasu having a level lead is going to op it's going to impact the team fights in a way that's noticeable. Definitely, with the auras as well that come into play, and not just that, but it's also the fact that it's going to have the ultimate and a little bit extra stronger. And just the damage. Engagement. And the damage output, yeah, yeah. indeed. It's, it's also going to play a factor in this. Now he's also got Shield of Regrowth online as well for that, and Milzy. And I think I can understand why we're seeing that. It gives him extra mobility overall and just raw tankiness. And all you've got to do to do that is switch stance. So, yep. good times. Yeah, great play, great build coming out from Milzy. He's going to poke Raffer. His gap close is one thing that you're gonna you like overlook overall on this because with Talaria, he's gonna be moving quickly anyway. Ooh, nice Raffer gets caught out. There's nice gonna pick. be the kiss, the zigzag, the ultimate. Raffer gets saved for the moment, but quickly. Cap Twig provides the last shot to take down the support. Ultimate out of the Zeus will put Yamin in some trouble. Emilzi on the dive, still trying to find it. Pretty Prime gets a couple of basics, hits the trigger horn, and he's gone. Yamin down for the count as well. 30 seconds in the box. He's down for the first time this game. You know what, after? I mean, I said it's energy, and they've got hyper carries for the late game, but right now, Obey really all oh, running away. Maniac going no. for the kill versus Dimmy. Finds the stun and tremors. Not enough damage to confirm. Meanwhile, Golf. 
Fury, though, on the left-hand side going to obey as well. This is huge for them. Energy are really losing this game now. This, this is this is a very rough time for the guys on Energy. Maniac with the hot juke away from adapting. I, I'm telling you, listen, it's, it's no secret that I've been a fan of Maniac for a long time, but I'm telling you as objectively as possible, this doesn't look like a man that sat out for a year. Maniac was once upon a time known as the best solo laner Europe had to offer. Yeah. You go back to World Season 1, he was the best Europe had to offer. Xavier wasn't even really noticed as a thing back in Season 1 Worlds. Maniac was, though, when he stood toe-to-toe -to -toe with Devios. Omega. And Omega, and did his thing, and, and he performed really well. But after that, the love for the game or other things away from the game got involved and he wasn't the same maniac anymore but now early on i mean it's only game one but it's a great sign for him and it's 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 the style of play as well maniac coming through going for the kill on the sun wukong under sun wukong's own tower i mean that's that's the classic maniac play if you guys didn't follow the scene when maniac came to lands and such. He's one of the louder players here, so look for plays like this all the time. Dimmy's in a lot of Dimmy's, trouble here. He's done. Sonic Boom, though, from Adapting. Across the play. The dot damage from Dimmy still sticking away. He will fall down. Poison doesn't spread. His Adapting did trade out at least one for one, but Prime's on his way. And, and it's adapting. gonna hurt Adapting. There's the help from Kepri. Waiting for the detonate is pretty Prime. Gonna look for it. Maniac gets hit by the help. And, the back. To, oh. and Milzy with the ultimate available to adapt. He's going to be raging after that one. Prime gets it off the dead. A lightning. Yamin gets a big old Kraken, but it's not enough just yet to pick anyone up. Oh, there's the help from the support. Maniac gets lifted up thanks to the meditation. And Pretty Prime takes Wraparound while he's dealing with Maniac. A Milzy from the back line. Obey. Helps. Obey. Helps. Obey. Wow. It's teamwork. 11 in total on the board. And the defending world champions, Graham are getting trounced. We have seen them lose games before. They have never in over, I believe it's a year and a half now, if not a little bit more, lost a set. They could lose this set. Obviously, it's only game one, that's what I'm saying. They could come back in game two and even this out, but right now, this one's looking all obey, I'm, obey, I'm, obey. I'm also trying to rack my brain right now, Hindu. When we see energy lose, they're usually battle of attrition. It is. Where players come back and it goes back and forth, or energy trail for a little bit, and then at the 20 minute mark, they come and take the game away. Very rarely, I cannot recall when energy looked this, I don't want to say outmatched, but when energy was, were losing this hard. I think the closest one I can really think of is Thanatos on adapting and Athena on Rafa. A long time ago. Okay. Against cringe crew or something like that. That's the only time I can think of it. It's not been this bad though, in all fairness. Raph is dead again. And Obey just picking energy apart right now. The level difference, the item difference is just so big that there's no comeback for energy here. They just keep falling down like dominoes. Yeah, I mean this, this is this is the 8k, 9k deficit that Thank energy you're looking at. Adapting, trying to line up, getting ready. Maniac plays forward, finds the stun. Still looking for more ultimate completely. Off the mark, big whiff coming out from Maniac. Oh, but look at the blaze for days from Twig. Gonna catch the Sonic Boom, and that's it trying to turn it around, but Twig's just swinging right now. The ult, not much of a difference between the two there, but the blink was hot. The ult was even hotter. Who is this Captain Twig, man? I do not remember gameplay like that. Triple Kraken coming out of Yamin, but look at the level differential. It doesn't do any damage to the opposing team, Graham. Obey pushes everybody off the Tier 1 tower. This one's gonna go down. Easy. And you're right, after I've not seen the world champions look like like this, yeah. like a normal team to an extent, who are losing against Obey. The two new members on this roster have helped to Dimmy. step this up already. Dimmy gonna get saved by Rafa, but he won't. Look at the catch! Emelito gets smoked by Maniac, not enough to kill but he gets caught perfectly in the wall. Twiggy looking for lazy backers, finds two. Emily over the hot trap, but a beads in response from Twig gets him out of the trap and cleans up the kill. You know, this happens, I'd say, I'd say seven out of nine times here, Hindu man, where uh, or, or this happens two out of nine times, or seven out of nine times, you're going to see Captain Twig come through and play the setup, man. He's going to play something tanky. He's yep. going to play even the, the full tank Arachne builds, right? That's what he does, and he just feeds a pretty prime over there in the mid lane. But every once in a while, every once in a while, like Twig goes. Fenrir, for example. Twig just goes, hey, hey, can, can I go? Can and the guys go, the I guess so. They give him a hyper carry or a hard carry, like like you see with this uh, Sir Ket, and then just, well, 
bam, look at what you're watching. He's I'm, out of control. And even though we're looking towards Sirkeh, who's 7-1-1 one, and one right now, keeping on Prime in the mid lane, his damage output has been fantastic. His position's been on point the whole game, been with his team the whole nah. way through as well. Nah. You're not feeling that? Nah, the jungler got seven kills. So it's always the jungler. He's got seven kills. Okay. Look at the kill chart. I got you. Assists don't matter. I got you. I don't care if the mid lane has 15,000 more player damage. Poor Millsy, man, been involved in 12 kills. You don't care. He's only got one nah, kill, right? Doesn't matter. No kills. Doesn't matter. Realistically speaking, though, 11 assists and one kill. Uh, 12 out of 14 of Obey's kills have had the stamp of the support on them. And, and honestly, this is this was the uh, player that I thought was really going to be an upgrade. Independent uh, of Frezzy and his performance last yeah. season, uh, I think that Emilzi is just a welcome. His approach to the game is welcome and Avail and it fits Obey. I thought that was a steal for Oh, did moment. you really? Okay, that's what I was like. Why do you pause it there? I, I really, I, I thought Emelino got it right there. Well, Emilzi's doing a bit of a Frezzy <laughs> impression right now, keeping two members of energy busy. Gonna hit three with an ultimate right now. Forces a stun on Rafa, but a good ball from Emelito prevents that. But Emelito's trapped inside the ultimate from Zeus. Thanks to Maniac wrapping around the back. Adapting ulted, and he's trying to find a way back in. He ulted way down the line. Rafa's gonna save himself. Double knock up coming out from the Kraken, and Rafa's gonna go down one more time at the hand and a pretty prime as number four for the mid lane. And straight back, Obey don't go for the Phoenix. They're heading straight towards the fire giant. And once again, that speed buff. Adapsin's had like one speed buff, I think I've seen all game so yeah. far. And since then, Obey just constantly pressured the fire giant, pressured the fights and the right opportunities. Really big issue from adapting in that team fight. He gets a he gets a really strong ultimate where it hits multiple yeah. players, but he ults, of, he charges the Mercury ultimate for so long that he winds up in no man's land out in the, ju out in the jungle. The rest of the team loses the team fight and he's just sitting there running back like, hey guys, I'm almost there, and it's already over. I'll be honest, I had energy 2 0 in this one. And Me for, too. For the simple fact of Obey is question mark on Maniac, how's his performance going to be, and question mark about how the synergy is going to work now that they don't have the same team together anymore. Sure. They lost Variety, who we've all spoke about potentially being the world's best player MVP at Worlds for overall. But it looks like Maniac stepped up and Millsy's joined the team and the synergies just continue to get better, it seems here. Oh, absolutely. Like I said, I, I, I really and truly thought that this Obey team would be better than it had been last year in the future. I thought that the, um, the support change was going to be a media upgrade, but the swap for Maniac would have taken a while, maybe a couple of weeks, if not a month, maybe a whole split. I really thought this was going to take time to wind up, but, you know... They're, they're doing exactly what they need to be doing right now. Well, just to be clear, Obey had never beaten Energy in a competitive game for Clive Sonic Boom Big hits ultimate. four, but Adapting sets up a good cracker for Yamin. They're just too far behind and they're too tanky here, that's, Obey. That's 100% what you're looking at here. Uh, energy, energy trailing by almost 20,000 gold. Their strong mechanics can't help them at this point, Graham. That was the, I'm going to use the word perfect, the perfect setup, the perfect Kraken, and it just didn't do much. A little bit greedy, though, from Obey. You see, there there's Twig going in as well. A little bit much, which allows energy a window now to push out the base. There's no fire giant for them to take, no gold fury to take, but they do hold. I need to stress this right here. That that energy, that was a gift from Obey. Obey have to be kicking themselves because that alone, when you're playing against energy, that play alone can be enough to bring oh, them yeah. back into the game. Look at the surrounding. They take out the support earlier on. Emilzi's in trouble now. Raffer is here. Adorexia's gonna flirt, but Dimmy, he, oh man, I thought they were gonna go on Emilzi. I thought they might have as well there. Ooh. Instead, the portal demon's available for energy to look to take it. Emilzi, the only one to really stand and watch. May look for a cheeky steal, we've got to watch himself. Portal goes to energy and they will fall back immediately. It's an extra window, this, for energy to wrap around the back with adapting for a few seconds yeah. and maybe collapse into obey if they do push on forward now. Well, this is this is one of the nice things about the portal is that right everybody's always going to be thinking about the objective, but what this allows energy to do right now is go back and spend all of the gold in yep. hand. They're able to buy, and then if they choose to portal back over to the fire giant, they can, they can be ready, but in this case, they have to push up the waves. Two of their phoenixes are down for the count. Now, before we saw that middle phoenix fall as well, Obey had never beaten energy. They'd never beaten them until the world finals when they faced off and right. took a game off them. And now they come into the next season and look like they're going to take a game straight away off them. Big improvements from Obey as time has gone on. And I, I'm still sitting here kind of in awe uh, at the fact that 
energy fell behind this this far this quickly keeping on those rituals as well you can see on the screen we've got a couple coming online now we've got a combat blink which is called flickering ritual on the side of sir cat but we've also got the two frenzies on the side of rafa and emilzy 25 percent damage increase for the team if you pop it around them you want this in the engagements the good news is i like that rafa got one but i love the fact that emilzy had the thought process yeah. to do it too so that there's not a big boost of damage that energy have an advantage against obey in the next fight obey pushing forward to the left hand side blinking from maniac is going to be good enough as pretty prime gets two so far backside cap twig looking for yaman controlled by adapting maniac to the rescue gets the control drops the ultimate as well maniac gets the kill one for the portuguese powerhouse and there's the third for pretty prime 20 kills in general for obey alliance they walk in and they take energy for a trip that was a quality game that was quality play from obey across the whole map yes the dueling got the kill and they got a lead there but the other side of the map as well very very important to make sure that even though one lane's doing well other lanes need to too the whole team performed amazing there up against the world champs. That's what it was for me, was that it was that the entire team playing strongly here. Uh, it wasn't just a carry coming out from, yep. the, from the double kill early on for Anoraxia, because sometimes you can point to that and say, exactly. well, the game spiraled out of control because they fed early on and Raxia got a double kill. Not the case, because sure, Anoraxia got the double kill early on, Pretty Prime got fat, Captain Twig got fat, even Maniac was eaten. Mm -hmm. When it comes down to it, Obey just beat energy fair and square. And the, the